Welcome to Move Church. Thanks for joining us for this week's message. We pray this message will both move and inspire you to make a decision into an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ. This relationship is where you obtain freedom and will help value your purpose and give you the power to engage your world. Now to the message. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm excited. I am excited. Listen, last Sunday was Easter Sunday, and Jesus rose from the dead, don't you know? Today is your resurrection day. Mm. Yes. Listen, God's just been giving me vision and clarity, and it's just so much that he's downloaded into my system. I'm so grateful, and I'm excited to really dialogue with each of you this morning about something that I believe is influential, powerful, meaningful, and needs to be incorporated into our lives. But I got to know if you're ready for it. Make some noise if you're ready for it. Yes. Listen, so urgency is something that I realized recently that I needed to incorporate it into my life. And I know what you're thinking. Are you talking about at the pace in which you move? No, I'm not talking about the pace at which I move, but I'm talking about the urgency to get close to Jesus. Because I know once I get close to him, that I'm actually going to be able to have this fulfillment that I've been looking for and longing for my entire life. So with urgency, once I incorporate that, I realize the significance that I won't be here forever, so I have to exist wholly right now. And if I waste my time in things that don't fill me up and give me the freedom and the peace that I'm looking for, that I'm missing the opportunity to live a full life. So that means when I have a situation where there's a conflict, I have to move with urgency to forgive so I no longer carry that baggage. Like when I have an issue with someone, I've got to realize that with urgency, let my attitude leave and let me forgive because the forgiveness will unlock the peace that I'm longing for. When I'm in a situation where I just don't feel good about myself, I need to urgently come to what the Word of God says so I can be reminded of the truth and who He says I am. Like these things are going to allow me to actually walk and live with the peace that we think that money can sometimes provide us. But the reality is all that you earn here on earth means nothing if you have yet to earn a relationship with Him. Can I be real with you this morning? I'm coming into your house, so I might move some things around. Forgive me, I'm walking with the Lord. Listen, when I realized that I needed to incorporate urgency, what I did not realize was that the reason why I had not had it prior in my life is because I was too consumed with myself. I don't know, maybe this is an issue that you have. Maybe this is an issue that the world has. As we live in a social media saturated world that creates opportunities for you and I to just demonstrate, selfie, I gotta talk about me. I gotta consume myself with me. After all, I can only exist in my, in my body, in my skin. I must have to worry about absorbing myself. But then I realized that self-consumption is never good for you. Like when you become filled with just you, you realize how many issues inside of you need to have a healer. Like I need someone who's actually worthy of praise, who needs to be consumed in my heart so I can actually have the freedom that I've been looking for. But I've lost myself because I've lost all the things in the world looking to gain all of the success. So when I thought I could find myself, I thought surely the job that I had was going to fill me up. The position of authority that I had on earth, I thought was going to be good enough for me to be able to consume myself enough that I could have real freedom. But then I was denied. I realized that that did not work for me. 
this beautiful house that I bought, these wonderful cars that I have, the clothes that I wear. Yet again, I bought the lie believing that these superficial things were going to bring about the peace that my heart so desires. But I was fooled again. I was fooled again. Consuming myself with me has never led me to a place of peace because peace does not exist without a relationship with him. Can I talk to you this morning? Like, can we have conversation this morning about the true things that you and I need to consume ourselves with? Like, I know you look good. I know you're fine. I know you're feeling yourself. But let me remind you that there's dangers in feeling yourself too much. And it's spoken about in Scripture. You can see it as clear as day. But will you allow the Word of God to enter into your heart? Like there's a reason why he desires residency in your heart because he has the only things that you need to be able to live with peace, freedom, power, and prosperity. But do you want that in your life? You're going to have to change the filter and turn the phone off just for a little bit because I know Facebook seems like it's doing so much for you, but realize this, the only face that you need to desire is his. I read an interesting statistic this past week, and it literally said that Facebook, second to the Catholic Church, has the largest influence on earth. The largest influence on earth, second to the church. There is something about this worldly thing that is creating a stir in all of us, that we desire to see ourselves, to show ourselves, to see others, to show ourselves. Back and forth, we go running this race, hoping to find fulfillment in ourselves. But what does that say about who we are? We've lost ourselves realizing that we were never meant to hold such power. Because there's only one who has the ability to hold your praise, but you've given your praise to the wrong thing in your life. And I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to me because I was that guy. So consumed with how I looked so consumed with who I was with, so consumed with my presence, my presentation, the car that I drove, the girl that I was with, the friends that I hung out with, the job that I had, the significance that I thought was going to provide me with peace, but it never did. And so my desire this morning is to make sure that you at least have what you need to make a decision to change your life. Because this isn't just something that you use to check off on the checklist. We want to invest in your life because Jesus has called us to be together. He has called us to share the truth about what his word says. And if you don't have urgency about it, you're going to miss the real life that you desire to live. Listen, sometimes without someone bringing this to your attention, this happens without you even being aware of it. Like you don't even recognize how much time you spent creating an entire lifestyle on a digital device that was never really meant to have your attention for such time. But you've given so much into that, wanting to recreate this facade, you've tired yourself out because who knows the truth, whenever you put on all the costumes, including your behavior and your attitude, you got to take that off at the end of the day. You walk in the house, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm tired because these shoes don't fit, but they look good. And as soon as you get in the house, you're so excited to take it all off and be real and to be honest. I got a little bit of extra me that hangs out, but that's how God made me. There's beauty in that. Maybe I have some imperfections that I spent hours to try to get to not be there, but did you not know that he intended for that to be there? Like, recognize the beauty because he is a master designer. And if you are this way, this is what you were called to be. And so we need to realize that today, urgency needs to be incorporated into the way that we chase after Jesus. Like you're chasing after that job, it's not going to fill you. You're chasing after that house, it's not going to fill you. You're chasing after that car, it's not going to fill you. You will get temporary pleasures over and over and over and over again until you make the decision to go to the king. (laughs) 
So what I realized is I want to spend my time doing things that hold value. So as Jesus has kind of leveled me up, some of the things that I've realized is that my foundations weren't the place to build a foundation. Like when you look at a structure of a building, you see something amazing, something magnificent. It holds all of us. It has air conditioning. It controls your seats. You've got opportunities to see audio, but don't you know there's a foundation underneath this building that you may never see, but it is there. And you believe that it's holding this building together. So will you not apply that truth to your life as you live every single day, knowing that there is someone above that is is willing and desiring to have a relationship with you, but you must make it accessible. Your heart needs to be open to this. You'll stand in front of the Audi dealership listening to all of the things that they'll sell you, believing that this car is going to make you seem so much better when all it's going to make your heart desire is more and more and more. And what you really want is a drink from true life, which is the opportunity to drink from his well. And you can have rest. You won't have to chase after these things anymore. And I'm not saying that having these things is bad, but lusting and loving them first is not going to help you. Consuming yourself with you will never satisfy your heart because we are a body of Christ meant to be together. The arm can't say to the leg, I don't need you because they work together. And without one, it's going to be a little bit difficult. So the body was membered together for the sake of working in unity. Why don't you realize that we need to work in unity in our lives? We need to move with the authority of Jesus Christ, recognizing that I don't need to have conflict with you forever. If I was wrong, if I wasn't, I'm going to leave it in his hands. I'm going to do what I can to make sure to mend this relationship. I love when Paul says, if it's possible, make sure that you're at peace with all men and women around you. If it's possible, that doesn't mean that you can fix or change them. But if you have the power to be at unison with someone else, you need to do that. And in doing that, you show what a relationship with Jesus looks like. So I got to go to the Bible. Is that all right? I got to go to the Bible. Um, Second Timothy speaks so well to this. And for a bit of context, I want to give you some insight into the history behind this. Um, this is a moment in Timothy where the book of Timothy, Paul's literally in jail and he's writing a letter to Timothy. Not too many. I'm telling you, it's hard to write a letter like this while you're in jail. I ain't never been there, but I can imagine it must be difficult. So Paul's in jail and he's writing a letter to Timothy. And what is he writing Timothy for? Hey, Timothy, I got to remind you of what you're getting ready to do when you go out there and you teach the truth. There's going to be some things that people oppose. There's going to be some things that don't seem as if they're right. You're going to be attacked by many different sources, but you need to hold to your foundation, Timothy. So here's what he said. But understand this, Tim, that in the last days, difficult times will come. For people will be lovers of themselves. Selfie. Lovers of themselves. Before you even appreciate the attraction, you got to put you in there. Lovers of themselves. You won't even behold the beauty of this world around you because you got to put you into it to make it significant. Stand before me and appreciate my creation. You already exist in it. You don't need a picture to verify your existence. He sees you. He loves you. It goes on to say there'll be lovers of money. I'm going to go ahead and be real. Don't feel bad in your seat because I'm actually talking to me. I was a lover of money. I was boastful. I was arrogant. It says it was a blasphemer. You were disobedient to your parents, and I was that guy at a time in my life. I was ungrateful. I was unholy, and I was unloving. I can just be honest with you. Not worried about whether or not you're there yet, but I got to be honest with you. This is what happens when we're not connected to him. Like, this is what happens. You have to know where love comes from. Like, it was manufactured by Jesus Christ. Like, take a look at that. It was manufactured by him, so you can't know what love is without first knowing him, irregardless of whether or not you want to deny him. If you know him, you know what love is. Listen, um, 
I might need a police escort as I kind of talk about this because I know some of us, you know, we take pictures of ourselves. And I don't want to offend you. Like, it's okay to still take pictures of yourselves, but I want you to be conscious of what you're consumed by. I want you to be aware of how to prioritize you versus him. So I was in Atlanta with a good friend of mine, my, one of my best friends, actually, and we were at a restaurant. I can't remember the name of the restaurant, but it was great. The food was amazing. And uh, we were talking basketball because we're former ball players, and we think that we know everything about basketball. And uh, Chris Weber walks up to us. And I'm not the type of guy that gets, you know, excited when I see these guys. In fact, I might get a ball and be like, check ball, man. What you want to do? We can play right now because I can beat you, Chris. So Chris Weber's a former NBA ball player, and most people, you know, were, you know, jump out of their seats when they see someone like that. And so for me, it's like, hey, Chris, what's going on? We're talking basketball. So we ended up having a long conversation about basketball. It was great. But then what started to happen is people started to recognize him because he was way taller than I was. And I'm a pretty decently heighted guy, but he was way taller than I was. And so people started to run up to him, and what did they do? Yo, picture. Yo, picture. And it, I could at least imagine about 50 or so people had to run up to him just to get a picture. And what I realized, and he said later, is no one even had an opportunity to introduce themselves. No one even had a conversation with me. They just wanted to put me in front of a camera with themselves and share that with the rest of the world because they thought they were going to get cred from doing that. They never even took the time to have a relationship with me. Now, I know it's hard to talk with them and get to know them, but think about the superficialness and just wanting a picture and I'm gone. Like, I just want to show me and I'm out of here. And Chris was like, yo, bro, I do this all the time. And I'm like, yo, I kind of see how that can be aggravating. Like, you're just treated as an attraction in a situation that I got to get a picture in front of. And so what we got to be reminding of ourselves is that how consumed are we with ourselves? Are you with me this morning? Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. I just amen myself. I got that from some old guy. Listen, one of the things that I realized uh, is that we waste valuable years of our lives when all we see is us. Like, until you get Jesus, you really haven't lived yet. Update, I'm sorry, I made a burst dribble. Until you get him, everything that you were doing prior to that was not life. You bought the lie, don't feel bad, I did too. Got a great price on it as well, but you bought the lie thinking that all of the things that you were working hard to create in your world were all done by your efforts. And in reality, it can come crumbling down just like that. Like if Jesus was going to come into this building right now, all of this doesn't matter. All of the chairs, the threads into the carpet, your shoes, your clothing, your car, your house does not matter. The only thing that will stand the test of time and give you access into his kingdom is your heart. I love that the Bible says to guard your heart because he knows how valuable this is. But we give our hearts to so many things thinking that these things are going to actually give us peace. But they will never do that because they weren't meant or designed to give you the peace that you need to live a real life. So everything you were doing before Christ, I hate to burst your bubble, was not life, but it can be now. Like if you want to see with high definition, then you need to have a relationship with God. Because when you see with high definition, you can begin to see the details, the problems, the issues, the things that were not visible because you were underneath a lie. You were blinded to the truth. You could not see clearly because you did not have the tools. But now in this new life, because you've died to your former self, and yes, there is beauty in death because this death will bring you the life that you always desired. But you need to act with urgency and begin to recognize that my life is waiting for me. And the only way I get access to my true life is going to have a relationship with Jesus. Somebody say real life. life. Hey, the book of Ephesians, let's go there. Chapter 2, verses 1 and 10. This is lengthy, but I think it's okay to read the Bible at length in church. Is that cool? So I have a version. It's an AMP version. You might see an NET version if she has up there. She does. Mine's is a little bit different, so don't be discouraged by that. But I want to read this to you line by line so you can understand the significance of this passage. 
Let me give you context first as well. Paul is also writing this book, but he's writing it to the Ephesians. The Ephesians are a group of people who have been highly blessed and have access to so many gifts. And he speaks to a spiritual bank account in so many ways. How many know about a spiritual bank account? Like we look at our physical bank accounts and we think that has value? Yo, the spiritual bank account is way better because inside of that spiritual bank account is adoption, it's acceptance, it's redemption, it's prosperity, it's opulence, it's power, it's your prophetic promise. These things hold way more, hold way more than the dollars that you have in your accounts. And he's trying to remind these people right now, you have been ignorant to what you hold, which is more valuable than anything else. Will you not see this? Wake up with urgency and recognize the need to come before your father and have all of your needs supplied. But you need to understand this. And he says it like this. And you, he made alive when you were spiritually dead and separated from him because of your transgressions and your sins in which you once walked. That was me. You were following the ways of this world, influenced by this present age. Anybody influenced by this present age? In accordance with the prince of power and the heir who is certain, as Satan, excuse me, on this earth. The spirit who is now at work in the disobedient, the unbelieving, who fight against the purposes of God. Among these unbelievers, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by sinful self, indulging the desires of human nature without the Holy Spirit and the impulses of the sinful mind. We were by nature children under the sentence of God's wrath, but just like the rest of mankind. But God, being so very rich in mercy, somebody say mercy. Because of his great and wonderful love, somebody say love, no. with which he loved us, even when we were spiritually dead and separated from him because of our sins, he made us spiritually alive together. Yes. Made us spiritually alive together. He didn't say discombobulated or disjointed. He said together you were made spiritually alive. Well, don't you recognize the Holy Spirit moving in this place for us to be used collectively instead of divided. To know that you must come together next to your brother or your sister in love to actually know what it means to have a relationship with the Father. And he raised us up together. And he seated us with him in the heavenly places because we are in Christ Jesus. And he did this so in the ages to come, he might clearly show the immeasurable, unsurpassed riches of his grace and redemption. For it is by grace, someone say grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor drawing us to him that you have been saved, actually delivered from the judgment and given eternal life through faith. Somebody say faith. And this salvation is not for you or me, not through your own efforts. All that moving you was doing, all the activity you was involved in, everything that you thought that you did to buy your righteousness. Yo, I'm a good person, man. I do. Ain't enough. You can never earn this. This is so good, it's beyond measurable, your works. It can never be done. And the reason why he made it so we could never do it, so you and I could never boast. Because how many know when someone does something well, they got to shine. They got to tell you about it. At some point in time, you start feeling yourself even if you don't communicate it verbally. I just think I'm a little bit better than her. I'm a little bit more righteous than him. So God says, you're never going to be able to earn this so all of you will have it together for free. Come on, I don't know if there's anybody who's excited about that, but I am thankful that I received that grace. Listen, it says, for we are his workmanships, his own masterpiece, a work of art created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us. Listen, I think this part is really, really great. How many want to find their purpose in life? Nobody? Shoot, I'm going to throw my hand. I, I want to know my purpose in life, right? How many want to walk in that purpose in their life? 
Like hands should be raised all over this place. Like I want to walk in my purpose every single day. But you can't walk in your purpose until you know who called the purpose for you to live in. Like you can't walk in that purpose without first knowing who called you to live in that purpose. But here's the issue. We have thought that our purpose was somehow something that we could create. But our purpose is much deeper than what we could ever imagine. But most of us will never see that purpose, unfortunately, because we have chosen to go by our ways and our rules. And because we make that selfish decision of being consumed by us, we will miss the thing that we are invited to be a part of and to actually live in peace and in freedom. So what I want to do this morning is I want to quickly show you three areas, yes, just three, that you need to experience a rebirth. Somebody say rebirth. Because it's okay to die to who you used to be and be born to who you need to be. So let's start with the first one. And this one right off the back. Trust. Somebody say trust. Trust. This is the first and I think probably the hardest one that you need to be reborn into. Because how many of us trust the zeros next to the other numbers in our bank account? Hey, God, I love you. I, I You're great, but I got to see what kind of money I have on Monday. I love you, God, but, yo, I need this nice, beautifully well-built house with all of the amenities that I like in it. I need to walk in these great shoes, and trust me, I'm a shoe guy, but I need these shoes to really feel confident. I need this outfit. I need to be with these people in order to really trust something. I have to see it. It needs to be tangible. So your trust needs to be reborn because your trust essentially equals your surrender. Like because you have been good to me over and over again or provided for me, I'm going to trust that you are good. And many of us have trusted the wrong things, not recognizing that if he has your trust, he has access to your heart. And if he has access to your heart now, this is the moment that you will actually be fulfilled in. Not the filters on your phone, not the people who give you likes. But the only like that you really need, that you already get for free, is his. And that like is enough to sustain you for an entire lifetime. But you have to make the decision to allow him to enter into your heart. Does anybody know of a king who is willing to give you an option to make a choice to accept him? And to abide by his guidelines that are actually going to free you? I don't know anyone who has that heart on earth because it does not exist in us. But he is such a gracious king that he said, yo, Dre, you can choose me or you can choose the world and I will wait for you. Even if you turn away from me, I will still love you and chase after you with the same heart as I always have for you. But you have to make the choice. What type of king do you know on this earth who has that heart? Let me help you. No one. But will you trust him? The second one is probably my favorite. You need to have rebirth with your nature. I love this one because we get mature. We get our doctorate degrees. We get our master's degrees. We get sophisticated. Yo, I could change my behavior. I could change my network or the people I'm around. No, you can't. Your nature needs to be changed first before your behavior is going to change. What is your nature? Your nature is the instinctual desires that you have inside of you that are built and come into you. And you need to be able to change those things. Because once you change your nature, then your behavior will follow. Like once your nature changes, now you can see a change in your behavior. So you know you're spending up all this time at night looking at things that you know you should not be looking at. And you find pleasure in those things. And you don't think that there's something else out there that can really hold you or to change you. But I'm going to tell you, once he comes into your hearts, you will be unbelievably oppressed by the way he changes your nature, which changes the things that you desire to do when nobody's watching. So instead of looking at these things you shouldn't be looking at, now you're going to spend up hours at night praying over your children. Now you're going to spend time at night praying over your family. Now you're going to spend time at night praying over your marriage. 
Now you're going to spend time at night praying over your financial situation because you have realized that this heart, the one that I have denied for so long, needs to come into mind so that I can exist and actually desire the things by nature that I need to desire in order to have freedom. But you need to first change your nature for your behavior to follow. And in doing this, you can access the love of Jesus Christ. The last thing that we need to experience rebirth, and to be quite honest with you, there's a lot of things we need to experience rebirth in our lives, but I just narrowed it to three. The last one is our source. You ever plug a computer into the wall so you can get your power? I know y'all run into the charger area when your phone is getting ready to run out. You gotta plug that phone into the source so that it can get the power, right? Well, the same way that that happens with that phone is the same way that you need to be charged by the right source. Mm. Got quiet in here. It's all good. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of that because I was plugging myself into the wrong sources in my life. I was plugging myself into the wrong place thinking that this charge was going give to give me the energy that I needed to carry on, but I realized that I had the wrong source. So what's your source? Is it that relationship that you shouldn't be in? Is it that thing that you covet after? Is it that position at work? Is it the respect of others? Is it the desires of your heart that you know are unpure? Like, what is your source? Because whatever your source is, is going to be the thing that leads you and motivates you and fuels you to make decisions in your life. So we need to change the source from what we thought was good for us into what is going to actually be good to us. Because when you plug into Jesus, everything that you thought everything that you saw, everything that you spoke, everything that you believed is now going to change. Like when you get the right source, now you can actually be plugged into the right thing that's going to give you full, free, and new life. New life. I love this component about being important or connected to the right source because this source changes everything, but you need to define what your source is. Is it the money? These things are not going to be a source that will last forever because I guarantee when you and I lay down for life, we won't be able to take any of those things with us. Like we will simply desire an opportunity to reflect on the life that we lived as we get ready to have a decision that's going to be made that will be final. But you need to act urgently and to stop consuming yourselves and begin to consume him because consuming him is going to lead you to a place of freedom. Philippines, Philipp, excuse me, Philippians, the Philippines is where I'd like to visit. I, was, I got it twisted. The wife and I were talking about going. I was like, oh, Philippines, oh, snap. I got it twisted. I want to take you to Philippians 4. It says this, rejoice in the Lord always. Delight, take pleasure in him. Him, not you. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit, your graciousness, unselfishness, your mercy, your tolerance, and your patience be known to all people. I don't know if there's anybody in here who loves people who have this type of attitude. I do. Like I do. When I'm around someone who makes me feel so welcome and so loved, I'm always reminded of who they are. Like I can always point back to a point in my life or a time in my life where I met someone who was just loving because it's not typical in our world to see love that way. Cut somebody off in traffic, they can curse you out 80 times already in the, like 30 seconds. Got the order wrong when you get to the drive-thru, you know you mad at them because they didn't get your chicken sandwich with the cheese on it. Like, bro, think about that. Like, is it that serious that they didn't get the order right? Like, just think about that for a second. Can your attitude be different? Like, why don't you shock someone and show them what it looks like when things don't go well, you still have a, an attitude of, I'm going to still serve in love. And watch how they remember that. Watch how they remember the fact that, yo, everything was really not presented well, but you didn't seem to have a reaction other than to say, you know what, I still love you. That's what's going to move someone to say, well, who do you serve? What is your source? Because that's not the source that most of us come from. You did something that disappointed me, I'm going to cut you off. You did something that hurt me, I'm going to deal with you in a disrespectful way. But Jesus is saying, you need to try something different. You need to come to me 
And by coming to me, I will show you a better way. And you will feel better about yourself when you have an interaction that is pleasurable. Like when you have that interaction, you walk away. Oh, my goodness. That felt amazing. But some of us are just like guinea pigs inside of a wheel, running as hard as we can, doing everything the way that we want to, thinking that we're getting somewhere only to hop off and be right at the same place. Like, are you ready to make some progress in your life? Like, are you ready to see increase in your life? Are you ready to see things that you never could have imagined in your life? You're not going to be able to earn it by your works. You will be able to receive it with this relationship and give it time to manifest itself. I know last Sunday was Easter and we thought that in that moment, everything would change and it will. But you need to be reminded that the moment that you decide to walk in your purpose and not be consumed by yourself is the moment that the devil gets an alert on his phone and says, yo, we got to be all on deck because they're getting ready to step out of our area. They're getting ready to walk into their purpose. We got to go do everything we can to get them to sign that subscription for one more year because I need more from their soul. Like, are you going to sit there and allow him to get you to sign up for another year of mediocrity, another year of disappointment, another year of failures? Are you going to allow him to continue to offer you opportunities for just casual sex as opposed to honoring your marriage? Are you going to continue to offer him an opportunity to let you look at pornography instead of saying, no, I cast that out. I'm not going to allow this sin to live in my life. I will take control of these negative things and I will allow the Lord to enter my heart so I can walk with purity. And now I can desire things that were meant for me to desire. Now I can love the things that were meant for me to love. I no longer have the filth and the darkness that was in me leading me to make decisions that was only tearing me up. Now I can make the decisions that are actually going to bring me life and pull me back together. But you need to understand and act with urgency and move away from self-consumption. Because it will never fulfill you. Philippians, again, one of my favorite verses, chapter 2, verse 1 says this, and as the musicians are making their way here for us to conclude, therefore, if there is any encouragement and comfort in Christ, as there certainly is in abundance, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship that we share in the Spirit, if there is any great depth of affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind having the same love toward one another, knit together in the Spirit, intent on one purpose, and living a life that reflects your faith and spreads the gospel, the good news regarding salvation through faith in Christ. Do nothing. Somebody say, do nothing. Say it again. Say, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit. Or an attitude of humility should be where you strive. Be neither arrogant nor self-righteous. Regard others as more important than you. Let's stand to your feet. Listen, I don't want this Sunday, and I'm not going to allow this Sunday to be another Sunday for you. Like, I'm going to act with urgency because I recognize the significance and the power of this moment right now to change lives. Because a lot of times we believe that this is religion and I just need to check the box off and say that I completed this. But in reality, this is life. This is the only life. But you need to make a choice today, right now, that you've never made before. And I know that you are on the edge of your seat wanting to make that decision, but you're still trusting the wrong thing. You're still connected to the wrong source. You don't believe that it's possible for your nature to change, but let me tell you, I have seen marriages revitalized. I have seen mental health restored. I have seen addicts become free. There is so much waiting for you, but you must first believe. But you've allowed your belief to be beaten down because you follow the standards of the world. And I'm here to share with you this morning that the standards of the world could never stand up to his like he operates from a different level of power, one that's never been seen or experienced before, but you need to make a choice today that this life that I used to live is dead, and I no longer live that way, but my life is new in Christ Jesus. 
like I want to give my life to him. So today, this morning, I want to open up this altar for prayer because there is someone who came in here today that wants to make a decision that they've never made before to give their life to the Lord because they're tired of the mediocrity. They're tired of this Mondays being Mondays. They're tired of Tuesdays just being Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays. And maybe there's a pick-me-up on Sunday. If you want to live, like right now, you must die first. But dying first to who you used to be. So that you can be born to the person that he's called you to be. So all over this room, I want your heart to be set or free and to allow him to enter just to actually make the decision to give your life to him, knowing that this decision can be the process of the change that you've been so desiring. And I'm going to be even more honest with you. As soon as you make the decision, it's going to get harder. Like the problems aren't going to disappear when you walk out of the door. They might even hit you by the time you get to your car, the negative thinking comes back. The moment you get in front of your spouse, you just start having an argument again. That is the devil in that moment wanting you to go back and reflect and come right back to the mediocrity because it's so easy to settle for things that are low and it's hard to reach for something that's higher than you are. But I'm here to tell you this morning that you have brothers and sisters that you can come alongside and you can make it to a place where you can grab that fruit that is good for you and you can begin to experience what love is like. Why spend your entire life dying for no purpose when you can expend your entire life living with one. So let's not let today just be another Sunday. Let this be the day that you were born again and became everything that he saw you for. And you stop believing the lies that you had bought and for so long believing that these things were ultimately going to fulfill you when there is only one that can fill you. If that's you this morning, I invite you, I encourage you, I urge you, make your way to the front. No one is looking around at this point. I want us to bow our heads and close our eyes to give those who are at a space where they want to make that decision to allow God to be first. If that's you, all you've got to do is make your way down here. We want to pray with you. We want to talk to you because we know that what you're going to do as soon as you walk out into this world is going to be able to fight the demons but why don't you put them to rest right now by saying I'm accepting you in my house Lord I'm accepting you in my heart I want you to cover my family I want you to cover and call my purpose I want you to be in the middle of my marriage I'm no longer going to settle for this I'm going to expect great things Because I believe that you are eternal and capable of changing any situation if I allow you to lead and not allow myself to lead you. So Lord, here we are in a position right now with our hearts open for you to see us. Father, I ask that you enter into the heart of every person under the sound of my voice. That they would be moved in such a way to know that this is life. And that everything that they did before was not but this is an opportunity for them to change their costume and to fit into the one that was designed for them to live in, Lord. And they will know you. They will love you. They will chase after you. They will believe in you. Father, enter our hearts in this moment. Give us clarity. We ask that you cover every bit of us now. In Jesus' precious and holy name, We all said amen. Come on, we all said amen. Let's give him praise. Listen, if that's you, if you made a decision to have your life be led by him, we want to celebrate with you. Let us know that. Indicate that on one of our connect cards because we want to rejoice just as the angels are rejoicing because this place is holy ground. And where you stand, you will begin to see the movement and the progression of a life now lived for him. So we desire right now for you to be able to do that freely. Come on, somebody say amen. Come on, let's worship, guys.